a silent but almost constant companion in my knife collection. Today we're going to do a redux slash retro video on the Cold Steel American Lawman. Hey everyone, welcome to this video that is not only just going to be some fun for you and me because we're looking at a blade that's been around a very long time, a, video, a blade that I've already previously reviewed, but launching this concept that I wanna start doing here at the channel. So I'm really looking forward to today's video. It's cold out, it's uh, October 11th, and it is 14 degrees when I woke up. I think it's more like 25 maybe now. Uh, yesterday we had our first snow here in the Rocky Mountains uh, in the Denver area. And uh, getting out here in the backyard in front of the new shed. And just wanna talk to you today about the Cold Steel American Lawman, how it has been a constant companion for me almost the entire time that I've run this channel in one form or another. It doesn't get a lot of play, it doesn't get a lot of screen time, meaning like for you guys to see it, but it is something that I, I must have. It's a must in my collection. I have a lot of like nice to have, it's cool that I have this blade type of stuff, but this is like a must have for me in my collection. And I wanna do this particular video and launch this idea of redux or retro videos, meaning uh, that I want to about once a month minimum is what I want to start doing is taking a look at knives that we have reviewed in years past that are still constantly in the collection. Something that I use a lot as either uh, plumb lines, competitive options, uh, and begin to start doing that with certain types of gear. And every once in a while, meaning at least like once a month, uh, have a video that is a redux or a retro. And I wanna hear from you guys in the comments below. A, what's your thought on this? Um, B, what do you guys wanna see in these redux? ducks or redo videos uh, or retro videos and how would you like me to call them because that is what I will put in the title description um, when I do these redo it's not a redo because it's not a review I don't want to do a review I want to be able to take the item out have fun with it and more just discuss what the the product does more than a lot of the spec part of it you know a lot of times we'll take five minutes talking about the blade shape and the steel and how does 420 hc on the gerber strong arm compare to 1095 on a rat model 5 or an sc4 and blah, 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 blah. i don't want to go through all that i want to talk more about like hey this is what this knife is continuing to do these are some maybe weaknesses i'm seeing the longer i use it you know things like that or this backpack or this flashlight you know stuff like that but i want to know from you guys would you rather i call them redux videos or retro videos those are the two options I want to go with how would you like me to title them when I produce the new content because I believe it not only will give me an opportunity to get back out there with gear that I love that I have to shelve a lot you know as a gear reviewer I often have to shelve a product after I do the month or two months you know of testing I'm like yeah it's great but on to the next thing and on to the next thing and on to the next thing to keep the content fresh and going. And so it's sad, particularly when you find something that's really enjoyable, something that I really connect with, but I'm like, you know what? I've got to shelve that because we gotta you know, take a look at this new product. And it's not, I want to partly do this just so I can get familiar again. So I'm really excited. I already made this announcement over on the social media, Instagram and Facebook, and that's why it's always good to follow us and check us out on those um, platforms because a lot of times you can see up and coming things before I can make a video about it. Uh, and it seemed like you guys were really excited about the idea of doing some of these retro or redux videos. And I look forward to just hearing the, the comments below and uh, talking about this American Lawman. Now, for me, uh, this was, pro I probably reviewed this knife maybe the second year of the channel, something like that. Uh, and this is the second one I've owned. I owned an uh, OS 8 version, and then when they upgraded to the CTS XHP, uh, my wife actually gifted this to me, I think over Christmas, like three years ago maybe. Um, 
and uh, since then, you know, they've gone to S35VN now. Uh, I've heard b back and forth that they might have now, a, it's a flat, Blade HQ says it's now a flat grind. Uh, Knife Center says it's a hollow grind on the S30V, uh, S35V, s vn versions. I'm not sure. Uh, I have no problem with the hollow. A flat would be interesting. I want to hear from you guys if you have a flat grind version and you know it's flat, you know, like a either a full flat or a high saber. Uh, I may go out and buy one right now. I'm totally happy with my uh, XHP and that's steel is great for edge retention kind of a bear to resharpen i know people uh, were really disappointed or you know frustrated or whatever word you want to use uh when cold steel had to stop using it because of what i understand production availability of that type of steel so they went to s35vn because it was more um available for their uh products so uh, i have no problem with s35vn in some ways i actually prefer it because it's easier to resharpen doesn't hold its edge as long as this steel but it is easier to resharpen so um guys with for me and why why this has been so silent but also so needed in my collection is a couple reasons one is that it is a three and a half inch blade length and i love cold steel but a lot of their blades just as one example for us is the full size voyager in uh aus 10 steel awesome blade awesome awesome blade um and actually a really good steel as well but it's it's beefy it's massive it's got a big giant full handle for so very ergonomic but it's gonna take up a lot of space in your pocket it's pretty heavy uh at over four i think this is like close to five ounces and then it's got a four inch blade which you know some people it's just too big or even legal reasons things like that at three and a half inches the lawman still is like civilian friendly if you will um but still extremely capable and then with the finger choice Oil, bringing in cutting edge about three inches um it's a double whammy for me because uh what i love and if you have been following the channel we will do a redux or uh, retro video soon on my one-stop shop folder the manix to lightweight by Spyderco. It's a very similar profile to this. And if you were to ask me for all around, like lightweight, EDC friendly, all that type of stuff, I just love the Manix because of how lightweight it is, but also their ball bearing pivot system, the really thin um, wired pocket clip, all that makes it great for everyday carry, but it's still very capable in a lot of harder use tasks. But it's just not as strong as this American Lawman, basically because of the triad locking system and the denser G10 that it offers. Now, of course, you can get the Manix and G10 and all that stuff, but I, I love the triad locking system, and I just love the very simple and slightly reinforced because of either hollow or flat. It has the slight, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, flat portion down to the tip it's just an overall stronger blade than the full flat on the um manix so that that's a, a positive and then again with the triad and then the g10 just being denser it has an overall harder use feel than the manix not always as edc friendly but i i I gravitate to it. So it's kind of like my, when the real work needs to get done, just being real, when the real hard work needs to be done, I'm gonna gravitate more to the American Lawman than to my Manix, even though the Manix is an overall one and done, in my opinion, more preferred package for me. It, it gives me that choil so I can choke up. And some of you don't like choils in your pocket knives, I totally get it. But I can use this in a very fine cutting, you know, carving, whittling, and it feels great, even though it's so crazy slim. I mean, this thing is so thin. Thinner than the Manix by a little bit and significantly thinner than say like the Voyager, you know, or something like that. So, I mean, this is a slim sucker, but I can still, choke up and I could make feather sticks for quite a long period of time, do other notching and stuff if I had to use it in outdoor format. It's got a 90 degree spine so I can throw sparks with it if I had to. So outdoors it's fantastic, rock solid. It's still got insane traction for more self-defense roles, things that you know a law enforcement officer or yourself may if you're trained would be something that would be a value to you. And then just because of its slimmer package, it's EDC friendly as well. It's not gonna take up a ton of real estate. It weighs under four ounces at 3.9. So it's a very um, lightweight package for cold steel. A lot of them are pretty heavy and bulky and beefy. That's kind of their claim to fame in some ways. So it's giving you, I think, this amazing blend. And for me, it gives me that when I'm going out on a night on the town, I'm more likely to take 
my Manic's too lightweight. But if I'm like in the backyard here, you know, and, and we're building the shed and I'm gonna be using my knife a lot and it's gonna be burly stuff and I might be giving it to a buddy who doesn't really know how to use a knife as well. And I don't want him to snap the tip on the Precision Manics. Well, I can throw him the American Lawman and know that it's gonna be able to handle whatever stupidity somebody who's not as familiar with blades may throw at it. Um, and on top of all of that, it's coming in at a good price point as well. Now, I know on Amazon a lot of the time, you can pick these up for like $75, which is pretty cheap compared to some of the more well-known blades like the Recon or uh, more expensive in the sense of like, say the Bushman right here. But again, a lot beefier, a lot heavier, great for ergonomics, great for the outdoors, very, you know, like outdoor slash, you know, tactical military focused, but it's a lot beefier blade, not as slim and uh, concealed and small and EDC friendly in your pocket as this, and this is gonna be like 130. This guy is, you know, coming in at again, 75. If you're, you know, hunt around a little bit, definitely under a hundred dollars if you look on blade hq or gp knives and we'll throw all those links for you guys you know below um as we always do for you and we appreciate it when you purchase your gear if you ha don't own an american lawman already highly recommended go check it out through those links but um it it's a knife that has stood the test of time in my collection it's something that i'm never going to get rid of because of the versatility to strength that it has to offer and we look at the action here i'm just going to drop this sucker boom uh, I know some of you have complained, you know, that uh, Cold Steel's actions can be really tight. That is true. But some, you know, elbow grease. I think I had to give this thing like a week of really good work. And again, this is several years old at this point. But now it drops very easily, flicks open very easily. And no issues there at all. It's just a workhorse for me. And so uh, that this is just my first kind of step into this Redux slash Retro. And I want to hear your guys' thoughts on which one uh, you think I should name it. Look forward to kind of hearing the consensus uh, on that. I like Retro. That's my that's my vote is Retro. Uh, I look forward to hearing what you guys think. But um, yeah, just this topic in general. And just wanted to, to show you that out of my entire collection of must-have pocket knives and you know glad like to have pocket knives i've both you know in the collection um i think that the american lawman is at like the very top of the must-have list and is right there with like a couple other blades i'm sure i'll do a video on that i'm sure you guys will be asking like what is that list and well i'm sure i'll compilate one at some point of like the must-haves versus the likes um and, and this is definitely in the must-have category because of all that it has to offer so yeah guys just lots of stuff coming and I just I, you are amazing without you guys this channel ceases to exist and i am so blessed i know you guys pray for me and my family uh we pray for you guys uh, i know you guys support you enjoy you i know so many of you that you get your family or just you on your own saturday morning you know midweek and you're sitting there with a cup of coffee watching and i am so thankful for that and you guys are so valuable and uh, loved not only by me but by uh, the community and by uh, God himself so uh, you guys are awesome stay equipped stay prepared see you out there